I don't know how far she'll make it with some of these queens competing. Can she come at least better than fifth? Don't worry, you're not the only one. The good part is that nobody really remembers her. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we're going to be looking at another rumored cast of Drag Race. This time for Canada vs. The World Season 2. That is right, Canada vs. The World Season 2 is filming right now. And some of the queens have mysteriously disappeared from social media. Now, of course, this is just a rumored cast. We will find out the cast later in the year when something is actually revealed. But for now, let's put on our little spy hats and let me tell you who these queens are and my opinion on them. So first things first, you've probably seen a couple of these videos online where they have announced 11 queens. Now, let me tell you something. There are not 11 queens. There are nine queens because some of those queens have already been debunked and I will get to those at the end of this video. So who's actually in the cast? Well, let's break it down. Since it is Canada versus the world, we are first gonna start with the Canadians. First up from season one of Canada's Drag Race is Tainomi Banks. The last time we saw Tainomi Banks on her television screen was in 2019, where she came in eighth place on the first season of Canada's Drag Race. She had zero maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins and was in the bottom three times. Now, Miss Tainomi Banks, I think got played dirty on her first season. Obviously she is a very talented queen and they kept referencing that to her. Tainomi and Brooklyn used to work together. Brooklyn used to always say, I, I know you can do better, show us what you can do, this, that, and whatever. And us as the audience who were new to her, we were like, what the hell, she's doing pretty good. Why is she in the bottom? Like, this is our first time seeing her and we all loved her. So I'm so glad to see her on this list and Tainomi is coming back and getting the second chance she rightly deserved. That season one of Canada's Drag Race, that judging was a little bit flawed. Brooklyn Heights has got a couple of seasons under their belt. She's got the hosting down pack now. So I think it's gonna be a lot fairer. All in all, I think Tainomi Banks is an excellent choice for Canada's Drag Race versus the World season two, and I'm super excited to see her. Next up from season three of Canada's Drag Race, it's Miss Fierce Alicious. Miss Fierce Alicious competed back in 2022 and came in third slash fourth place. She had two maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom one time and came in third slash fourth place. Now y'all, we totally saw this one coming. Miss Fierce Alicious was the drama, was the star of her season. She was definitely bringing you the entertainment that we needed. And we found that that season definitely started to balance things out. I mean, season one of Canada's Drag Race was a little bit messy and a little bit mean. Season two, they overcorrected and it was too much of a love fest and a little bit boring. And by season three, Canada's Drag Race had got the format down pat. And season four, four definitely played up on the season three vibes and got even better in my opinion. But back to Miss Fierce Delicious. Miss Fierce Delicious, like I said, was a star of her show. We recently saw her again on our television screen as part of the cast of the Traders Canada. Now, Miss Fierce Delicious is definitely here to make a TV moment, definitely here for the center of attention, and that's exactly why we love her. I heard through the grapevine that she is not necessarily the nicest person to work with. Now, I have never worked with her myself, so I don't know if any of that is true, but as a television person, we love her, and I think this is a such a strong casting choice. I don't know how far she'll make it with some of these queens competing for entertainment purposes only. I'm so happy to see her. And let's not forget, she had some pretty iconic runways. If she's able to bring a 2.0 version of that, then she is definitely a queen to watch. Next up from Canada's Drag Race season one and UK vs. the World season one, it Lemon. That is right, Lemon is coming back to compete for her third time. I'm so excited about this because usually the queens that come back for a second and third time are all American queens. So it is about time that the Canadian queen gets a chance to compete on multiple seasons. On Canada's Drag Race season one, which aired back in 2019, Lemon had three maxi challenge wins, two mini challenge wins, and was in the bottom two times. She ultimately ended up placing in fifth place, but won the hearts of Canada becoming a fan favorite. 
Since the show, she had gone on to do a bunch of really cool stuff, including the iconic music video with the winner Priyanka. But then we saw her come back in 2022 on UK vs. The World 1. Now, when she came back on UK vs. The World 1, everybody was super excited to see her. Unfortunately, she ended up getting kicked out first and came in ninth place. This was not the fantasy that everybody saw for Lemon. She came off of her season, she was that bitch, and then really made a name for herself afterwards. So on UK vs. The World Season 1, everybody was expecting big things from her, and there was a huge uproar when she got kicked out first. Nobody saw that one coming. So the fact that she's getting a chance at this again is absolutely needed. She did well on her first season and she got robbed on her second season. She is an icon, she is a star, and she definitely has a chance to win it this time. So it is said that Canada's Drag Race season one wanted a Canadian winner, and that's why they had casted Isis Couture. Ultimately, that didn't end up happening because Isis quit the show. But I think the producers are gonna be looking to try to get a Canadian winner this time around and Lemon could be that girl. We'll wait and see how things turn out. Because the queens are voting, they might just kick her out early because she is competition. All in all, I am super excited to see Lemon. She's a fantastic queen and a great competitor. And that is it for the Canadian queens. Now we're gonna move into the international contestants. First up, is the US of A. As we've seen on Canada vs. The World Season 1 and UK vs. The World Season 1 and 2, we will be getting two American queens. The first of the American queens is Miss Alexis Mateo. Now, Alexis Mateo competed not once, not twice, but three times. That is right, this is gonna be her fourth time competing. I think the only contestant to do Drag Race more times than Miss Alexis Mateo is Juju B. The first time we saw Miss Alexis Mateo was all the way back in season three of the US version of Drag Race. This was back in 2011. So we're talking like 15 years ago. I mean, I'm a drag queen, not a mathematician. So just go with it, okay? Back then she had three maxi challenge wins, one million challenge wins, and was in the bottom three times, eventually coming in third place. We then saw her come back the following year in 2012 in Drag Race All Stars 1, which we all know was a disaster of a season that we no longer talk about. But even as bad as that season was, she did pretty good. Uh, on that season, she ended up having one maxi challenge wins, two mini challenge wins, and was only in the bottom one time, which means that she landed in fifth slash sixth place. She then decided to take a full eight year break before coming back for a third time to compete on All Stars 5, which was in 2020. On All Stars 5, she did just as well, she had zero maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom two times, eventually placing in fifth again. So the question now is, now that she's coming back for her fourth time, can she win it? Can she come at least better than fifth? So if you're counting, she had a third place, a fifth place, and a fifth place. So it seems like her statistics are going down. Hopefully this time around, she can take those statistics up and maybe win. Now, Alexis Mateo has been a staple in the drag community, has lots of experience, and has lots of money to throw to this. So she has a really good chance of winning. On top of it, she got killer catchphrases, and she knows her drag and her drag aesthetic really well. She's definitely a seasoned queen and a juggernaut in the drag scene, and she is definitely a force to reckon with. All in all, she is definitely some stiff competition. Next up from the USA is Miss Kennedy Davenport. So this is Kennedy's third time competing. We were first introduced to Kennedy all the way back in 2015 where she competed on season 7 of the original franchise. On her season she had two maxi challenge wins and two mini challenge wins. She was in the bottom two times and eventually came in fourth place. Then came back in 2017 to compete in All Stars 3, where she had zero maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge wins and was in the bottom four times. She did though eventually come in second place, getting beat out by Miss Trixie Mattel. That was a controversial win for Miss Trixie Mattel. I think Tris Trixie is an icon and definitely deserves the title of Drag Race. When it came down to that final lip sync, Kennedy Davenport danced circles around her and people were saying that Kennedy got robbed because for a lip sync for the win, Kennedy definitely won that lip sync. Now, should she have won the season? 
I personally don't think so. I think Trixie was definitely the more deserving queen at the time, but let's be honest, she didn't win that lip sync. I think it is great that Kennedy is coming back. It's been a few years that since we've seen her, so I'm, I'm really curious to what she's been up with. And now, if you do watch some of her interviews, she's definitely got a lot shadier and she's definitely got a lot more honest. And we love that because we need a little bit of drama on the show. On top of it, she's a very seasoned queen who knows what she's doing. She's been on Drag Race a few times and has been doing drag full time for years. And so she is definitely gonna be stiff competition. All in all, this is a great casting choice, and I'm curious to see what Kennedy is going to bring this time around. Next up, it's Eureka, and Eureka was first introduced to us back in 2017 on season 9 of RuPaul's Drag Race. She had zero maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins, but what made her so infamous on that original season is that she got disqualified due to a knee injury. We then saw her come back on season 10 where she had two maxi challenge wins, two mini challenge wins, and she was in the bottom two times. She came in second slash third place getting beat by Aquaria. She then took a couple of years break and we saw her back in 2021 on All Stars 6. On All Stars 6, she had one maxi challenge win, zero mini challenge wins, and was in the bottom one time where she got eliminated coming in fifth. But even though she got eliminated, she battled in the Lollapurusa, making it into the finale and coming second slash third slash fourth, depending on how you see it, having been beat this time by Kylie Sonique Love. So this would make Eureka's third slash fourth time competing, making her a juggernaut in this uh, competition. On top of it, she has done a lot of things outside of Drag Race, including We're Here. So she has a lot of designer connection and she's got a lot of money. So Eureka is a heavy hitter and it seems like all of the US queens are. Eureka is a very talented queen and not one to be underestimated. I think that she's gonna come in here with guns blazing. If she's competing for the third slash fourth time, then you know she's in it with a vengeance and she wants that crown. Now I will say that Eureka is the only one on this list that is a little bit more uncertain because the list has been changing ever so often. So if anything changes, I will let you know. All in all, if Eureka comes back, I am super excited and super interested in what she will bring this time around. Next, we are moving to the UK and the UK has two more queens. Next up, it's Le Phil. Le Phil was introduced to us back in 2021 on RuPaul's Drag Race UK season four. She had zero maxi challenge wins and zero mini challenge wins and was in the bottom one time and eventually coming in seventh place. Now this is definitely a little bit of a random choice in my opinion to come back. I think LaFille definitely was a great queen on her season, but she was very much a forgettable queen. There were some really big personalities on that season and she was kind of an early-ish out. She wasn't like a first first out, but she was definitely not a, a finalist and the one, and you generally remember the finalist. So I do like that she's getting a second chance to compete and show herself. It's been a few years since she's been on the show. Uh, we haven't really heard much from her. Maybe some people have if you're living in the UK, but personally I haven't. So I'm really curious what she's been up to, what she has to bring and what her updated drag is like. I definitely think she has an uphill battle on this season. First, because there's a lot of strong personalities and second, because a lot of these queens did very well on their original seasons. So she's gonna have to fight for it if she really wants it. That being said, I do love people getting a second chance and a second chance she is getting. So let's see what she brings us. Next up from Drag Race UK season one and UK vs. the World season one, it's Miss Cheryl Hole. That is right, Miss Cheryl Hole is coming back to compete for her third time. We were first introduced to Miss Cheryl Hole back in 2019. On her original season, she had zero maxi challenge wins and one mini challenge win. She was in the bottom two times, eventually coming in fourth place which was a controversial fourth place if you ask me. We then saw her come back a couple of years later in 2022 on UK vs. The World Season 1 where she had zero maxi challenge wins, zero mini challenge wins, was in the bottom one time and eventually coming in a place. That is right, she got kicked out right after Lemon. So the second time she came back, we really didn't get to see her much. She was in and out of our screens just like that. Now on her original season, as I said, it was a little bit of a controversial fourth place placement, but she was still very memorable and very likable. And the fact that she never uh, won was kind of like the ongoing joke. She was definitely a little bit green on her original season and definitely needed some time to come back. So when she came back on UK vs. The World 1, 
Uh, everybody thought that this was her time. She had some budget and she was definitely a queen to watch. Unfortunately, she got kicked out really early and didn't really get to show much of her. So I'm glad to see her back on this third season because I feel like she does need a redemption. Now, the part that I'm kind of a little bit perplexed about is that we are both seeing both Cheryl and Lemon, which I think is a little bit of a copy paste, uh, if you ask me. I would have liked to have seen both of these queens, but I just don't know if I would have liked to have seen both of these queens on the same season again especially as there are so many queens and so many franchises to choose from now that being said when Cheryl did compete on her second season it was a pandemic season so it was really hard for her to get things ready and I don't think she was mentally in the game so when she comes back this time I think she is definitely gonna be more prepared and definitely gonna have more of a fire under her belly and she could probably get the costumes that she wants to get and I'm pretty sure she's gonna be able to do some really great things she's been in the game for a few years and I heard through some promoters that she is one of the better paid queens from the UK so she's definitely making money and can pay for some expensive drag which is what we'd like to see all in all I am excited to see the 3.0 version of Miss Cheryl and let's see if she's able to do better than the last time and finally from Drag Race France season one it's La Cajena now, if you don't remember La Cajena, don't worry, you're not the only one. And that is because La Cajena is the pork chop of her series. That is right, she is the first queen ever out on Drag Race France. We did not get to see La Cajena at all. We have no idea what she has to offer. She was in and out of our screens like that. There's been so many seasons of Drag Race since then. She has definitely fallen by the wayside. I'm glad to see uh, early queens get a second chance. I do think that this is a little bit unfair for her to come in and I'm afraid that she's gonna be the first one out yet again. She's competing against some heavy hitters. The good part is that nobody really remembers her. And I say that this is good because not only is she gonna get a boost to her career, but also nobody knows what she's gonna do in the competition. So she is definitely the dark horse and nobody knows what to expect from her. All in all, I think this is a little bit of an odd choice. I like that France is getting included into this season. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a like Cam Hugh come in out of this. I think that would have been really great. I do think it should have been an early out from a series with multiple queens. Like Canada, if Canada had an early out, I think that would have really worked uh, because then you would have had all the full gamut. But when you only have one representative from a season, it better be a really great representative. And I don't know that La Kahana is. I think there were so many more memorable queens that they could have gone with. We do have two seasons of Drag Race France and a lot of superstars. France is a great series. All in all, I'm curious what she's gonna bring. Uh, she is definitely the dark horse from the competition. So that is it for the cast. So if you're telling it up, that is three from Canada, three from the US, uh, two from the UK, and one international queen. If this sounds familiar, that is because this is the lineup that Canada wanted to do on Canada versus the World One. But rumored was that Trinity K. Bonet dropped out last minute and they replaced her with Kendall Jenner and that's what made Canada have four queens and the US only have two. So it seems like they are going back to their original premise. Now, I personally think three Canadian queens, three US queens, and two UK queens is not international enough. I would have really liked a lot more queens from a lot of different franchises come in and give a lot of flavor. Personally, I think we could have done with two US queens and brought in somebody from Brazil, Philippines, Thailand to make it a little bit more exotic. But I have a feeling that Canada is doing this because they want the ratings, they want their queens to get known, and having more US queens in there will mean that they'll get a larger audience. And I don't know how much the international queens bring. Having said that, UK vs. The World 2 has got a lot of international queens and the season is turning out to be spectacular. So I feel like we shouldn't underestimate the international gals. That said, I heard that Canadian visas are really hard to get by. So unless they start switching up the location sites, we might be getting a lot of this if they continue with the vs. The World format. Speaking of an international gals, some of you were probably saying, wasn't there supposed to be a Brazilian girl on there? Wasn't there supposed to be more internationals? Well, clearly you have been watching some other videos and a lot of those rumors have been debunked. So let's break it down. So from Drag Race Brazil, we had Miss Aquarela, who uh, was rumored to be on the cast, but was recently debunked. People thought that she was on the cast because she went missing, but recently started posting back on Instagram on February 17th. So therefore, if she's posting uh, on social media, that means she's not on the show because they do take your phones away from you while you're on the show and therefore cannot 
post. So that one is debunked. The next one is Miss Alexis Michelle. Miss Alexis Michelle was consistently rumored on a bunch of lists, but has also been debunked. She had a, sh a show on February 12th and another show on February 23rd. So if she's doing shows, she ain't competing. The other one that was heavily rumored was Something Wong. Now, Something has not been posting on her social media, so that is the reason why people thought she was on the show, but she is posting on her non-drag account, and that's how people figured out that she is not on the show. Oh. And the last queen to be debunked is actually Gia Metric. I have actually filmed this video several times, and my last edit included Gia Metric, so she is freshly off the cast list. Oh. So if anything changes, I will let you know. That's unfortunate. I think a larger cast would have been a lot better and it would have been great to get some international gals. I do think that another US and UK queen would probably not have been the way I would have went anyway, but hey, I did want some more episodes. Y'all, that is it that I have for you for today. What do you think of this season? What do you think of this cast? Are you Who are you excited for? Leave a comment down below. I do read uh, all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.